so good morning all um, and uh, uh, whoever attendees are i, I would wish uh, help for them and be safe uh, i would also like to start and and you know i will get uh, you know catch what manas was saying you know uh, we are we are quite privileged uh, you know some of the uh, when you see uh, the covid warriors on the road and i i personally when i look at doctors nurses even uh, we might be saying few things about the government how they are managing it but it's, it's life is is really difficult over there so uh, with a somber note i i uh, so i represent an uh, industry which which is which was first to shut down and uh, i i i was just counting we have completed 100 days of shutdown and uh, probably we will be the last one to open so even though we we do consider ourselves now as a safest place Uh, much safer than uh, you know to your residents and that's how we have been welcoming our all our consumers wherever we are our malls are open especially in baroda bangalore and hyderabad so uh, on the macro part uh, you know this industry you know the retail industry represents around uh, more than 10% of uh, india's gdp i don't want to get into numbers uh, but to just to give an analogy that uh, the india industry is is mm. like was there for a complete shutdown i'm hearing a hello yeah so from a business model perspective uh, our our only source of inflows are rentals uh, we don't have any other inflows we are not on e-commerce uh, we are not on ott uh, and and we don't have uh, you know we just started uh, the home deliveries of food other than that we don't have any source of uh, you know income uh, for last three months i would say we were complete shut down so so no sources of income whatever we had we preserved uh, you know each and every drop of it uh, we went to basics uh, so we uh, i i just recall uh, the the last week of march uh, there was one team who were completely on on advocacies you know we we were representing to the government uh, we were representing to uh, irdas of the world we are we were representing to rbi we were representing to the local government state government ministries and of course uh, uh, you know the highest office in the country and uh, and and i must confess that there was a situation which was more desperate and uh, and there was chaos there was confusion and uh, and and we have been asking uh, you know every sort of help from all uh, you know all all areas where we could get help to so so when we went to the government we were asking about you know whether we can get a one time restructuring of the loans uh, we are capital intensive industry uh, we have huge cost in terms of interest uh, we have huge uh, equipment maintenance cost uh, we manage big assets uh, when you come to our assets they are huge uh, the cost of maintaining air conditioning itself is huge uh, we have huge manpower cost we have huge property taxes so we went to the government and and to all the you know associations where we could uh, kind of uh, ask waivers in terms of uh, you know uh, waivers in terms of fixed cost uh, in the property taxes uh, you know electricity duty we asked for liquidity support from uh, from the government you know whether we can get some immediate working capital 15% 20% whatever we can get at least to you know uh, make sure that the business is is lubricated uh, there were huge costs in terms of workmen and then we want went to the government as job subsidies you know with some amount of 50% of minimum wages could have been given to uh, uh to the uh, to the workmen uh, or to us so that we can actually feed them uh uh you know and then, then we went to the insurance company there was a huge premium we paid for our nurses uh, for loss of profits and possibly so all the doors you know frankly if you ask me after uh, you know two months of day and night of uh, more than uh, 200 representations i i don't see there's uh, there was enough at the light tunnel uh, end of light of at the end of the tunnel but the best part of the second team uh, we already initiated started looking inside and uh, whatever we had uh, we said let's share the pain and uh, and and the sharing of pain went to uh, the vendors uh, to employees ourselves everybody and then we said that this is the time where you know we should stand up and collaborate uh, the best part was we had good relationship with our vendors and uh, barring the msmes where we thought that they might need cash we released some of the you know immediate payments um, 
and and then slowly and slowly we started uh, putting some processes around cash and these are all basics i, I remember uh, you know my fellow panelists uh, we have uh, around more than you know 20 plus years of experience i remember those days when we you know during our article ship time from chartered we used to look at our cash vouchers and cash flows and that was the uh, that was uh, the area where we went into and and all the senior professionals including uh, my team we went and, and we looked at practically every line item of cash you know whatever we are paying so uh, and and we, you know whatever our co panelists said you know deferred capex uh, shut down the projects which we don't need uh, you know remove the marketing costs at present then we started looking at innovative ways of uh, you know how how can we uh, reduce the cash over there you know outflows uh, we read the contracts and and we came up with the idea of uh, you know amcs can be shifted uh, we shifted some of the annual maintenance contracts we renegotiated uh, you know most of the annual maintenance contracts we renegotiated with all the consultants uh, and and the retainers uh, so practically all cost line items were challenged inside uh, it was kind of uh, a commander role i would say you know where the entire finance team played during that time and then the entire business team supported us a lot our procurement teams went out and and uh, we changed some of the vendors uh, who who didn't wanted to you know adjust with us so uh, yeah so a harsh time harsher stance uh, but uh, i would say uh, i remember uh, you know the title of robert schuler book uh, tough times never last <laughs> tough people do so we were really tough uh, during that time and uh, and 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 we really uh, you know then the second the third team was actually working on the financing bit you know we were looking at uh, getting some working capital loans so we got few funds from banks uh, due to our relationship better relationship uh, uh, we were also privileged to have net debts lower net debts because uh, we have been there in the market for more than 7 plus years so our net debts were lower so we were a little luckier than Than the uh, other other industry. Um, so far, some some of the team members came up with very innovative ideas, and I you know I I would just want to put one or two. Now, uh, the insurance premiums you know we normally pay upfront. We don't go and and beyond the last few dates. Uh, one of the team members went into the insurance policy and said, "Boss, there is one clause where we can you know give a bank guarantee to the bank." and defer this payment by 60 days and it's you know uh, those 60 days were looking so enchanting for me you know even for a small amount i i don't uh, say it's a small amount because every rupee was counting at that point of time so uh, i'm sorry i'm getting a little granular because i i want to recall every single day you know which i spent in last 90 days i i you know i can write a book on this <laughs> after you know uh, we are through with this lockdown so yeah so uh, quite a few challenging stuff uh to just uh to give you a uh, you know to my co-panelists and and uh, the attendees here uh as a group we never went for work from home you know uh, we have been debating internally for long there have been challenges i come from a mnc background of more than 11 12 years i was in bp i was in uh, vf corporation for more than 10 years so uh, i was used to work from home culture and this there has been an internal challenge with you know team share which has never been a culture i would say we went ahead and we tested work from home and the best part was as soon as we were testing work from home uh the lockdown started so i think uh, we we were ahead at least on that curve and uh, i was personally surprised uh, by the you know uh, resilience of the group you know frankly if you ask me uh, somebody who has not done work from home uh, an entire entire staff is working from home and touch wood uh, i don't see a major uh you know work getting stalled or payment getting held or any any business getting uh, you know stalled during that time so yeah so so that that was you know from a social part of uh, part of it uh, i think our first priority was to make sure that we keep our human resources intact uh, you know uh, as our co panelists said uh, families were were the priority we spoke to all the uh, the entire team members so the entire a team was met on on one whatsapp group so uh, there was one whatsapp group which was formed so we had you know weekly houses we had uh, fun uh, you know normally what happens during this time and i have personally also seen that uh, if one day you don't get calls from any of your colleagues you feel isolated and sometimes you feel uh, whether uh, you know you you are really needed in in that organization and uh, you know those those workplaces give you that confidence that 
you are uh, respected as an individual or a professional in your organization but working from home actually removes uh, you know that that disparity and 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 leadership comes in in this place and i'm i'm proud to say that uh, in in our group uh, leaders stood up they were resilient though there was internal factions as well we had never seen this kind of situation so uh, from that perspective i would say uh, you know there was a test of leadership and then we came strongly out of it uh, now uh, my biggest strength you know uh, which is again i catch from what manas was saying the restoration cost so i'm uh, now we are spending a lot on uh, welcoming our consumers and last one month we have made our places safe so as you all uh, you know go out and uh, you know visit our malls wherever they are open i would say they are much safer than uh, the housing societies or the marketing areas where you go out or the vegetable mandis or even i would say your residence as well so please venture out and and see how safe uh, we are and there's a request we have been making to the governments also to so at least start the consumption cycle once again so on that note uh, i would not take more time and as we go along uh, maybe uh, give your answers uh, over to you kabir